Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Grade Up. I hope you all are doing really well and I'm audible to you perfectly well. There's Sana, there's Karan, there's Blessing, there's Liji, uh, there's uh, Ilam, Odin, Sushmita is there, Neeraj, Madhavi, Gupta, Sushma. Good evening everyone. Let's quickly start. Uh, today is our fifth, uh, the fifth lecture. Uh, of course, you will be having your weekend. So make sure that you're revising all your, uh, the four parts that have gone before that. Uh, all the four parts, the PDFs have been shared with you on the Telegram group so that you can probably revise it properly. You can make your proper notes. Make sure that you are uh, well versed with all the topics properly covered so far. And of course, today we will continue with British literature. This is the fifth part we will of course start with a customary quiz very simple very easy quiz that we've got for you today and uh, post that we'll of course continue so far we've discussed about English Chaucerians we've of course discussed about Anglo-Saxon Anglo-Norman Chaucer's period uh, and thereafter of course we just started with the post Chaucerian period with the help of so some English Chaucerian writers who were imitating Chaucer so we'll of course be continuing from there and we'll talk about Scottish Chaucerians and then we'll go on to the baronage today. Okay, so let's quickly get started and let's see how... Uh, of course, of course, Swati, all the ages will be completed. Don't worry about it. All the ages will be completed. We'll cover the entire Britlet via this course, right? Each and every aspect of British literature that is important will be covered through this course. So you don't have to worry. We will, of course, be covering Elizabethan age. So don't worry too much. Okay, here comes your first question for the quiz. There is a reference to Malvern Hills. Malvern Hills are these hills, just like we've got, like, you know, uh, we've got uh, Shimla as a hill spot in India. Similarly, we've got these Malvern Hills there in UK. So you need to tell me which work is having a reference to Malvern Hill. This is such a beautiful question for set exams. Multiple times you will see this question come in. Malvern, Malvern's Hills can be seen in which work? Very quickly I want the answer so that we can proceed with the topic that we have to discuss. Let's quickly have excellent, excellent. So we've got the correct answer. Saima has given the correct answer. Swati Jha is absolutely right. When we are talking about Malvern Hill, Pius the Plowman, right? Whenever we are talking about Pius the Plowman, the full title, Vision of Pius the Plowman, right? What is the full title? The full title is The Vision of Pius the Plowman by Langland, right? We discussed how Langland and Gower are the two important contemporaries of Chaucer. And that is when we discussed the vision of the vision of Pius the plowman and plowman of course talking about like you know the working classes the farmers and please remember during this period the pastoral tradition is also coming we'll discuss about that in today's lecture also the ecologues they are coming today so Malvern's Hill is there in uh, your uh, Pius the plowman let's look at the second question the expression a fair field full of folk a fair field full of folk this is fair field full of folk what is the correct answer very good, very good. Tenzin, Sana, uh, Ilam, Sushmita, all of you have given the correct answer. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Absolutely, Swati. Dream vision while sleeping on the hill. That's correct. Okay. From where have these lines been taken? Where do you find this expression? A fair field full of flock. Folk. Now, when we talk about this, you can actually use this in your PhD entrances whenever you're talking about romanticism. You can say that romanticism is just not a movement that is starting with the coming of uh, the lyrical ballads or the pa preface of the lyrical ballads. But this was a tradition when anyone was talking about imagination, when anyone was talking about nature, then romantic spirit was displayed. And clearly, we can see that this example, a fair field full of folk becomes the example. What is the work? Again, very quickly, excellent. Excellent. Good evening, Tritu. Very good. All of you got it right. Swati has got it right. Sushmita, Blessing, Sana, Liji. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm good. Thanks, literature lover. I'm good. Thank you so much for asking. Okay. So this is the correct answer. Pius the Plowman has got this famous alliteration, a fairy field full of folk. So clearly telling you about nature. Also remember, whenever we talk about romanticism, particularly British romanticism, British romanticism is associated with with pantheism nature loving nature loving pantheism god is everywhere god is in nature pan means all theism means god nature is also having god and also solipsism solipsism when we are talking about our own individual selves when we are talking about our own individual selves so romantic writers particularly british romantic writers are pantheist and solipsist 
right of course we can contest this but yes that is like you know uh one of the regards that they've got richard the red list was written by very important this is very simple question has been asked sometimes in your uh like you know your teaching exams richard the red list Where, who is this written by very very quickly so when we are talking about richard the red list this has been written by quickly very quickly so who's the writer so you know chaucer's works clearly chaucer's not written it right mallory is famous for lee mota d arthur yesterday i also told you about the most important works of gower but there is one writer who's known as a writer of richard the readless who's that Langland is the correct answer. Okay, Langland is the author of Richard the Redless. Now, please remember, Langland is writing about the working classes. He is talking about the classes which were ignored by Chaucer. The classes that were ignored by Chaucer, because Hudson says Chaucer was not writing about everyone. Those people are getting covered. They are getting covered uh, by William Langland. So, William Langland is the author of Richard the Redless. Okay, uh, all right. Let's look at this very important. Yet easy. Which work deals with the peasants' revolt of thirteen eighty one? Which work is dealing with the peasants' revolt? Very good. Which work is dealing with the peasants' revolt of thirteen eighty one? Very quickly, please tell me what is the correct answer here. What what is the correct answer? Which work is dealing with the peasants' revolt thirteen eighty one? What what becomes the correct answer here? Yesterday we had spoken when we discussed that how Chaucer was of course not writing about the working class movement because he was a part of the nobility and therefore he could not criticize the nobility being a part of it. Right? Uh, that is the same reason why Robert Browning calls Wordsworth a lost leader because Wordsworth, by accepting poet laureateship in eighteen forty three after Saudi, is literally becoming a participant with the authoritarian figures right so that is of course there excellent absolutely right vox clementis is the work right vox clementis is the work confucio amantis remember is a very important work which is an encyclopedia of love this is a question that we had looked at yesterday also and the house of fame by chaucer legend of good women by chaucer but vox clementis vox clementis was the correct answer it's dealing with the peasants revolt 1381 peasants revolt associated with wat tyler okay brilliant okay let's come on to the next question question one of the first englishmen to challenge the authority of catholic church very easy question i want all of you to give the correct answer for this good evening sk how are you now i hope you are doing better because you had gone to the hospital i think yesterday okay what is the correct answer for this one of the first englishmen to challenge the authority of the catholic church very very quickly All right, so uh, very good, very good, uh, excellent. Swati, Saima, very good, brilliant. So remember, I told you that the first Protestant or the first prose writer in English or the first person to challenge the Catholic authority was John Wycliffe. John Wycliffe is also the person who is responsible for getting us a proper English version also of the Bible. He was a person who was questioning the church's authority, and he said that even common people need to have proper resources in order to ensure that they are able. to uh, move towards a path of spiritual success themselves they don't need any clergy they don't need any ecclesiastical order to support them and he was of course at the forefront of something which was called as your uh, religious reformation therefore we call him the morning star of reformation reformation would be inaugurated by martin luther 100 years later but wycliffe is definitely trying his best to bring forth these ideas right so of course important who is known as the father of english prose again i have answered this question in a way but i want you to tell me who is considered to be the father of english prose so the father of english prose very very quickly what is the correct answer here right and please remember wycliffe is at the forefront of ensuring that the ecclesiastical practices are no more corrupt he doesn't want corrupt practices at all right absolutely very good right so you have john wycliffe who's known as a father of english prose because of his initiatives that he's taking to translate the bible for the common people he is trying to give us the first authentic english version of the bible which would be understood by everyone which can be deciphered which can be understood by everyone all right so who is called the father of english prose it's john wycliffe who's very famously called as the father of english prose we have of course bacon 
spoken, writing essays, uh, and he's also a pioneer prose writer. The Regiment of Prince is a work of, this is one of your Chaucerians, who is the, what is the correct answer here? The Regiment of Prince, this is a work of, we discussed this yesterday. I hope all of you know the correct answer very, very quickly. What becomes the correct answer here? The Regiment of Prince is a work of. So when we talk about the Regiment of Prince, this is a work of which writer? Very quickly, I want the answers to be coming. So Ruchi, yes, Wycliffe was right for the previous one. What about this question? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Swati Cha has given the correct answer. Ritu Chaudhary is absolutely correct. Wonderful. So when we talk about Thomas Ockleave, Ockleave is a writer of Regiment of Prince, right? Thomas Ockleave is a writer of Regiment of Prince. Which of the following poets wrote a famous poem mourning the death of Chaucer? So this is a kind of an elegy written on the death of Chaucer. Himachal Pradesh set exam is like you know it's a favorite question for HP set they keep on giving this question every now and then okay so what is the correct answer here again which of the following poets wrote a famous poem mourning the death of Chaucer very quickly please so that we can get started with what we have to discuss today the the poet who is mourning the death of Geoffrey Chaucer what is the correct answer for that Excellent. Brilliant. Saima has given the correct answer. Ockleave, the governor of Prince is mourning the death of Chaucer, right? Thomas Eliot, classroom students, if you remember Thomas Eliot, a prose writer, the three most important works of Eliot, he's giving you the first Latin English bi a dictionary. He's also the person who's writing the Castle of Health, telling you about physical fitness. And third and most important, when we talk about John, uh, when we talk about Thomas, uh, uh, when we talk about Eliot, right, who is writing as a prose writer during the period is also the fact that he's written the book named The Governor, which is telling you how prince, monarchs, rulers, governors should behave, right? And here, a lament on the death of Chaucer is Ockleaves, the governor of Prince, right? Who translated the work of the German poet Sebastian Brandt? You can also get the work, like, you know, you can also get that The Ship of Fools, The Ship of Fools is a translation of which work? The Ship of Fools is a translation of the German poet Sebastian Brandt's book. Okay, the German poet Sebastian Band's book is getting translated as the Ship of Fools. So what is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer? Very, very simple. The Ship of Fools is a work by. We'll be discussing it today when we look at Scottish Chaucerians. But still, excellent, excellent. Uh... Very good. So Ritu Chaudhary has given the correct answer. Ritu Chaudhary is absolutely right. Okay, Ritu Chaudhary has given the correct answer. Alexander Barclay is the correct answer. Okay, and for John Skelton, remember we looked at Skeltonics. Skeltonics were jingling. These were jingling couplets, right? So we need to remember not just jingling couplets, but in a way, jingling way of looking at your work was considered to be Skeltonics. He had also written the Sorrow of Philip, uh, the the Sparrow of Philip Sorrow. So that is of course important work. All right, the use of the pastoral of satire for court life is first used by. So this person actually got the ecologues. He got the ecologues. Ecologues, the pastoral tradition. When you are looking at the countryside to comment on the current situation, that is called ecologues, right? Those are called ecologues. So which among the following, who among the following was actually using very good, very good. Ruchi Sharma is absolutely right. Alexander Barclay was the first person to use the pastoral tradition to criticize the court life. Because by giving you the pastoral, he was trying to juxtapose the pastoral with the court life. He was trying to give you a juxtaposition so that you could criticize. And this pastoral tradition then continues. Even Shakespeare is using it in As You Like It. Correct? So this is something that we have to keep in mind. Okay, now let's quickly come on. Uh, uh, so the idea of the quiz is just to ensure that whatever we have studied in the previous class, you're looking at the work correctly, you're trying to revise the work. That is the only thing. That's the only purpose. And just making sure that you are having fun via your studies and you know, uh, like, you know, whether you're clear with the pointers or not. Yesterday, there was a comment by one of you. Uh, so one of you had also asked me to write the page numbers of Rotelich, which are covered so that you can read it. So uh, that is also something that I will do today in today's session. Okay. All right. Let's quickly start. 
so sorry okay let's quickly get started uh, with the main agenda for today now whenever we are talking about whenever we are talking about british liter literature please remember right after the death of chaucer there was a period of barrenness that had come the literature that was being produced was having little imaginative value why was it uh, having little imaginative value because the war was going around and as the war was going around there were no stable kings there was no like you know there was no single ruler who was ruling for over 100 and 150 years the rulers were changing every now and then because the situation was very volatile it's very similar to like you know a party which is a coalition party you don't know whether the minister will remain as a minister or not so the kings because of war were changing every now and then now because the kings were changing every now and then the writers were not getting patronage and because the writers were not getting patronage how would the writers survive so therefore you see that people are working people are occupied in other occupations and they are after working then contributing to the development of writing but imagine if you're if you're very tired would you be able to produce anything imaginative you wouldn't be able to produce something imaginative then what are you supposed to be doing in that particular scenario you would be probably analyzing the period or you will talk about something that can be improved in the society or you will be looking at certain needs of the society i will give you examples okay for example like you know if you are working and after you come back you suddenly see that this was a latin word which i didn't understand so there was a need of dictionaries there were there was a need of dictionaries and that too latin english dictionaries right there was a need for latin english dictionaries this need was completed by Eliot Thomas Eliot had completed it he was basically a predecessor of T.S. Eliot he was a predecessor of T.S. Eliot okay then of course there was a need how can you train the monarchs right then that also the book named the governor the book named the governor again by Thomas Eliot was completing this need then people had how could we stay fit and fine in today's time so you had the castle of health for example that was written by Thomas Eliot then then people wanted to know how can we learn the art of archery so you had toxophilus which was written toxophilus which was written by roger astrum then people wanted to know uh, about certain uh, like you know about the entire notion of madness so you know depending upon the times people were not having proper full patronage and therefore they were not engaging in imaginative works as chaucer had the liberty to do and thus you see because the wars are going on there are no kings and queens who are supporting or patron are a patrons for these poets therefore there is a period of barrenness because people have to survive on their own selves and at that time in those days surviving as an artist was not a possibility right there were just so many uh, career options uh, which were available and you had to deal with those those many number of options available and being an artist was not something that was a given fact so thus you see that in this age there is a barrenness that is taking place and in lieu what do you see you see that there there are uh, like you know there are prose writings that is developing which is commenting on the society there are other aspects also which are taking place and one such aspect is the there are artificial disciples of Chaucer who are called your English Chaucerians who are called your Scottish Chaucerians right your English Chaucerians and your Scottish Chaucerians right so people who are trying to imitate Chaucer people who are following Chaucer however are not able to carry forward the rich tradition of Geoffrey Chaucer because Chaucer had the liberty of patronage Chaucer was a diplomat he had a good financial uh, like you know in terms of financial stability he was having all the resources available whereas this particular age was not offering any respite in terms of financial help to any ordinary worker so please understand that we can clearly see that many people are trying to imitate Chaucer just for like you know in the free time just to quench their thirst for writing but otherwise they didn't really have a proper conducive environment to produce literature also we saw that because there were wars that were taking place the patronage was restricted the patronage was completely restricted there was a kind of an emergency period that had developed 
there was an emergency situation right but still we are able to see the development of prose writing still we are able to see prose writings that were proliferating during the time period so please understand this this becomes crucial for your understanding and what is this that whenever we talk about this period because this was a period of political emergency therefore we are not having any work of art which is particularly very rich in terms of literariness but it's important from a prose point of view because a lot of prose writers are coming in okay also remember there were a lot of restrictions so there were multiple restrictions that were imposed on people people had restrictions they could not really uh, open or express themselves freely free thinking was actually crushed completely people in authority were crushing these free thinkers these free thinkers then their voices was getting completely suppressed so understand the context in which this writing is taking place and on that note we come on to the important writers we have writers such as king james the 1st king james the 1st this is not king james the 1st who's like you know your jacobian monarch this is king james 1st king james 1 he is writing the king's choir the king's choir written in rhyme royal the same stanza form as chaucer a b a b b c c written in the rhyme royal fashion king james 1 writing the king's choir which is written in rhyme royal right he had he he had this love for lady jane beaufort who was the daughter of duke of somerset and she like you know the cousin of henry the 5th so clearly he is a part of the nobility no doubt but he is writing the king squire which is becoming an important work <coughs> sorry that we have to remember okay which is becoming an important work that we have to remember even robert henry sen who's writing the testament of cresseed cresseed is a very popular story troilus and cresseed coming from the trojan war coming from the trojan war a war between greek and sparta because the greeks uh, like you know menelaus's wife had been taken away uh, by paris so therefore we have this 10 year wars which is called the trojan war and in that particular war there is this entire character of troilus and cresseed and please remember there was a concept of spoils of war what do we mean by spoils of war that means if there were two parties one and two and they were fighting and if this party was ready to like you know they had defeated then not only were they victorious but they would also take the women children uh, along with them right and that is called spoils of war they would take money along with them they'll take the women along with them that was called as spoils of war okay so clearly the testament of cresseed which is actually a kind of a continuation of troilus and cresseed by chaucer he's also writing about orpheus and eurydice right this is actually taken from boethius orpheus and eurydice there's a myth that you know uh, that when uh when like you know orpheus saw that eurydice had died and he went to the underground in order to get her back but uh, when uh, like you know the god of the underworld agreed he's agreed to send uh, eurydice back he said okay fine but orpheus make sure that you don't look back but he looked back and that is how you know eurydice never came and he started writing sad songs so these are these are basically myths so whenever you have time always go through classical myths they always help for your general knowledge also because you know in literature there are these references to these myths every now and then then you have william dunbar a very important writer considered to be a chief among the scottish chaucerians right he's writing the dance of the seven deadly sins he's writing the dance of the seven deadly sins translated uh, this was actually translated into english also uh, but please remember the dance of the seven deadly sins by dunbar this was a very common mask performance also during the elizabethan period it's telling you about the seven deadly sins such as gl gluttony greed pride so So all these are the seven deadly sins that are told. There is a question that comes: which of the following? Pick the odd one out. So you must know about the seven deadly sins, right? You must know about the seven deadly sins. So whenever you talk about, whenever you talk about these writers, these writers were imitating the master, but their writings were not of high quality. the The works were actually lacking quality. The works were not having proper quality. We also have Gavin Douglas, who's writing the Aeneid. He's translating Virgil's Aeneid. So translations are also which are becoming. 
becoming important during the period you also have your translation writings which are becoming popular during the period right so do make it a point that you remember that this is a barren age because creativity is not encouraged creativity can't be encouraged because the war has made the situation so volatile that they don't have a fixed monarch who can then be their patron okay so that is basically the the important yes yes absolutely okay now when we talk about like you know this entire period please remember that in this period which is also famously called as the barren age this is in multiple books you will see this as the age of revival so multiple books will actually call this as the age of revival this was actually an age which is also many a times called as the early tudor period early tudor period period because the tudors would also be coming so clearly when you talk about this age clearly when you're talking about this period please understand that this was a time when no literature that was having a lot of literary merit was getting produced right there was no literature that had literary merit that was getting access to production okay so this needs to be okay so this needs to be very very clear all right so do make it a point that um, okay what video has the gali made okay so so do make it a point that you're able to understand so prose of the 15th century that we are talking about we have writers like william caxton william caxton is publishing the first ever book that is printed in india uh, in england that is the dicks and sayings of philosophers the dicks and sayings of philosopher right and william caxton a quen so a quen cemetery uh, like you know 400 years celebrating 400 years right a uh, biography a detailed and scholarly work by jd painter so jd painter had also written on to commemorate the 400 years of caxton getting the printing press uh, because caxton got it in 1476 so this book by jd painter is in a way commemorating the works of william caxton it is commemorating the works of william caxton okay with thomas more a must read writer why a must read writer because in your net exam you will see questions coming from his utopia utopia has to be on your fingertips you need to know each and every aspect of utopia and rather today your homework is also that you need to this is not uh, uh, this is not thomas more this is chaucer uh, why this picture is there because this is trying to depict like you know the later chaucer period so this is not so thomas more this is chaucer this is just trying to depict the early chaucerian period okay so just remember uh, sorry uh, chaucer period chaucer's pe right after chaucer's death the period that had come okay so today not only should you look at thomas more's utopia you should definitely take a de detailed look into thomas more's utopia you must also look at 10 other most important utopian works and 10 other most important dystopian works so make a list try to summarize that this is your homework as it is you have two days now so just make sure that you're doing this homework correctly i will be asking and i'll be discussing it over uh, the telegram channel also so do make it a point that you're doing this homework okay or right so thomas more considered to be the english socrates he was influenced by the humanists of the period what is renaissance humanism renaissance humanism is coming always remember from this word humanism is human right this is actually coming from human when man is at the center man is at the center of the universe and not god and people have infinite potential right people understand that there is infinite potential in man people actually understand that man is having infinite potential people also know that man is having infinite potential very 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 important his utopia is telling you about an imaginary ideal society utopia basically means a place that is nowhere found a place that can't be found anywhere that is a utopia that's an ideal society that's a perfect society that you're having right absolutely should be a place nowhere found right thank you arjun that's very sweet of you so do keep it in mind that whenever we are talking about utopia utopia is a work that is inaugurating the other prose writings also of the period and therefore it is called a true prologue to renaissance so utopia is famously called as the true prologue to renaissance okay so please keep this in mind this is important utopia is a true prologue to renaissance it is considered to be the first work related to modern socialism socialism was telling you about that there needs to be equality in the society socialism was telling you about the fact that how 
everyone is equal this marker is not my marker this is everybody's marker there has to be society ownership and individualism was completely discarded the you, the individualistic materialistic spirit was completely discarded under socialism right it was originally written in latin 1516 and it was translated into english by ralph robinson 1551 both the dates are important both the dates have been asked 1516 it was published in latin originally written in latin and 1551 getting translated by ralph robinson okay uh, of course a uh, source of inspiration many consider is desiderus erasmus's the praise of human folly and praise of human folly is considered to be like you know the main source you have the history of richard the 3 the history of richard the 3 The history of Richard the Three is an unfinished work by Thomas More, but it is actually an example of humanistic historiography. You are not just presented with the events as they have taken place, like a uh, history presents, but it is providing you with the central humanism. Doesn't means that you are giving mankind a sympathetic light. Humanism just means that you know man is at the center. They are discussing about man. They are discussing about problems of man. They are ultimately showing you the power of man and infinite potential that man has. right and therefore rightfully deserving to be the center of the universe so utopia a true prologue to renaissance the first prototype of modern socialism an example of works that were telling you about places nowhere found to criticize the current society to criticize the current society okay good evening surpi no worries if you're late then we have sir thomas mallory so thomas mallory known for mota di arthur which will be used by tennyson also later on right so lord uh, Uh, so when we are talking about alfred tennyson alfred tennyson is actually using these works in greater detail so these of course are becoming crucially important for them so thomas mallory is a translator romancer he is he is getting printed through the uh, like you know through caxton so caxton is really helping sorry so caxton is really helping to publish the works right uh, to publish the works of uh, sir thomas mallory caxton as it is is publishing over 100 books so clearly the books that were contemporaneous he is definitely publishing them this is a prose romance that's telling you about the romances or arthurian legend so the arthurian legend king arthur and his knights uh, the, the 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 tales of chivalry the tales of courage the tales of honor having damsel in distress so lord Uh, when we talk about alfred tennyson alfred tennyson who became a poet laureate in 1850 after the death of uh, william wordsworth many believe that elizabeth barrett browning would actually become the poet laureate but she was not made the poet laureate in 1850 and later of course we saw that you know posterity has been more generous towards robert browning but during the contemporary time uh, elizabeth barrett browning was very very popular elizabeth barrett browning was one of the popular victorian poets of her times uh, so much so that virginia wolf is writing the flush which is telling you about how this popularity dwindled and flush is written from the perspective of uh, elizabeth barrett browning's uh, dog because you know the dog is not happy why has robert browning come because this lady is not giving me a lot of time. time now okay so tennyson's the idols of the king is based on lee mota di arthur so mallory known for mota di arthur okay now please remember whenever we talk about the literature of the early renaissance period this is also called the early renaissance period or it's called the tudor period or the early tudor period so tudor period is from 1485 all the way till 1603 that is the tudor dynasty so henry the 7th henry the 8th edward word is coming mary and elizabeth the three children of henry the 8th these five rulers are forming what is called as your early renaissance or tudor period okay so this is something that you have to remember okay so do remember this this of course become important becomes important okay right so so uh, this is something that please 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 remember okay now translations of the bible are of course an important time uh, like you know are an important literary work uh, important literary genre that's getting developed during the time so you got william tyndal you are having william tyndal writing english new testament you've got miles coverdell writing the complete english bible you've got roger ascham so tyndal and coverdell king tyndal and coverdell these are the two translators of the bible right They, these are the two translators 
commentators of the Bible because they want to disassociate themselves from the elevated tradition of Bible writing which was not comprehensible to anyone. Because people were not able to comprehend that, therefore these people were actually having a different like you know a different approach towards translating the works and making it available for everyone uh, in english so that they could consume it okay uh, then of course roger astrum known for toxophilus the school for shooting the school of shooting or also for the schoolmaster the schoolmaster being an educational treatise it was published by his widow 2 years after roger astrum's death so roger astrum's uh, like you know toxophilus and the schoolmaster two most important works of roger astrum so Thomas Wyatt is actually introducing your Terza Rima. He's also introducing so Terza Rima. This is like you know a rhyme scheme of most of his works A B B A A B B A C D D C E E. This is like a rhyme scheme that he was following. Uh, now when you talk about Sir Thomas Wyatt, Sir Thomas Wyatt is important for a couple of factors. A he is introducing Wyatt and Surrey are helping to get blank verse, which would be perfected by Christopher Marlowe. Wyatt and Surrey are also getting the Petrarchan sonnet form right they're also getting the petrarchan sonnet form because of which they actually become important right so this is also an aspect that we have to keep in mind so sir thomas wyatt wyatt and surrey these are two people who are introducing lyrical poetry into england they're using like you know their their poems are getting collected and they're published in totals miscellany so totals miscellany has got the poems of thomas uh, uh sir thomas wyatt as well as surrey earl of surrey both these poetries are available in these works works right so both these kind of poetry writings are available you can actually see both of them coming in their works right Henry Howard is there. Uh, Henry Howard is the Earl of Surrey. He is introducing blank verse, whereas Wyatt is getting the sonnet form. Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, is uh, introducing the blank verse, whereas when we talk about Wyatt, Wyatt is actually introducing the Terza Rima, the Terza Rima and the sonnet, the Terza Rima and the sonnet. Okay. And don't worry about these terms. We will, yes, Liji, we are coming on to that also. Don't worry. We are coming on to your development of drama part also. So you don't have to worry about it at all. Uh, so so don't just bear with us for a bit. Uh, also remember this question comes. There are 96 poems of Wyatt that are coming in totals miscellany. Can you see total? Total is not doing anything. It's just compiling the works of Wyatt and Surrey. He is merely, merely compiling. He is merely, merely compiling the works of Wyatt and Surrey. So where is the literary merit? Therefore, baronage. Hence, baronage. Translation of the Bible. Very good. But the Holy Bible was already written. You are just translating it. No imagination, only hard work. So therefore, baronage. Roger Astrum is telling you about the school of shooting and is also telling you about how, uh, like, you know, educational degrees should promote training of teachers. But otherwise, Astrum is not writing any literary merit work, work of literary merit, right? Total's miscellany, very, very important, was actually the first printed anthology of English lyrics. The first attempt that was made to anthologize, put them all together, right? Come up with an anthology, put them all the relevant bits together and come out in in the form of an very good very good alarm very good why it is introducing your why it is in a way helping in the development of your so see basically white and sari both are responsible for sonnet form are responsible for terza rima and blank verse both of them together jointly richard tottle is compiling the anthology is compiling the anthology and it's finally getting published in 1557 okay now comes Liji, your part about development of drama whenever we are talking about development of drama this is how your development of drama starts now for development of drama you have to be very very clear with a couple of pointers and what are those pointers the pointers are basically that whenever we talk about drama drama is actually starting from drama is actually starting from something that is called as religious drama so uh, whenever we are talking about the modern Elizabethan drama which was divided into comedy tragedy city comedy right which was divided into comedy tragedy and city comedy this was the Elizabethan drama this actually has its roots it actually has its roots in your rest uh, your religious drama and religious drama was also of multiple types religious drama was also of multiple types you had the morality play which had personifications of virtues there was a good person there was an evil person they were accordingly given names you also had you also 
had something which is called remember this i've told you multiple times my b and miss my b and miss so your mystery plays were based on the lives of bible and your miracle plays were based on the lives of saints mystery plays based on the lives of bible and miracle plays were based on the lives of saints right so there was clearly a development of modern elizabethan drama which was promoting entertainment but it had its roots the roots were basically coming from religious drama okay so this is an aspect that you have to remember so you have your mystery plays you have your miracle plays you have your morality you have your interludes all of these are leading to the development of drama all of these are actually leading to the development of drama so this is something that we have to be aware about so it is actually drawing it is actually coming you know development of drama is coming from liturgy right plays were performed early in sacred buildings the plays were being performed in sacred buildings the actors in these plays were priests right priests were acting as their actors there was a public holiday which was dedicated on uh, on the day when the dra drama performance was taking place it was a public holiday there was a corpus christi plays corpus christi plays they were basically telling you about the fall of mankind and the ultimate consequences that they had to fail the history of mankind is also presented in the corpus christi plays and there were four major cycles you had the chester cycle the coventry cycle the wakefield cycle and the york cycle basically what you have to remember basically you have to remember that the development of drama actually has got re religious uh, roots right the religious roots are attached to the development of drama this is something that we have to keep in mind a miracle play literally wanted to show you a miracle that was performed right a miracle that was performed by christ right or god himself so any miracle that was being performed by christ or the or god was actually getting depicted in the miracle plays even right now if you read many charitas they will all talk about miracles of your particular specific leader right so miracle play is basically telling you either about the life of saints m i s either telling you about life of saints it's either also telling you about a miracle that is performed any sort of a natural like you know you were not expecting your paper went wrong, uh, your paper didn't go well but still you cleared the exam what is that that's that's considered to be a miracle you lost your car keys but you suddenly find them that's a miracle right the small little miracle and big miracles also right yes ab uh, so groundlings uh, these these all things we'll actually talk about in elizabethan theater so keep this keep this point with you when we'll talk about groundlings uh, ab zishan we will talk about the groundlings when we discuss about your elizabethan literature okay so that will be discussed then okay so please remember that these plays these plays are from the scenes from the episodes of local religious trade guilds right local religious trade guilds wagons were there coming together we have the examples also we have saint nicholas rising of lazarus these are all examples of miracle plays these are all examples of miracle plays miracle plays literally uh, a form of dra dramatic activity in which a miracle is either performed or the lives of saints are being talked about and narrated right so clearly drama is just like you know in india you got the ram leela drama is having religious connotations we also have the mystery plays the mystery plays are the corpus christi cycles corpus christi cycles right they were very often based on passion and death of jesus christ they were based on passion and death of jesus christ right uh, so we we of course have uh, so whenever you talk about m y b my b they are basically coming out of the bible these stories are coming out of the holy bible majority of times right so please remember whenever we talk about the development of drama mystery plays miracle plays moralities interludes they are all contributing <clears throat> to the development of what we call as your elizabethan drama okay uh, very very quickly let's look at at some of your doubts i got this uh, thing also that you know the doubts at the app were not getting cleared so let me just quickly very very quickly look at the app doubts also oh my god there are so many app doubts okay uh hi kusum hi sara hi ruchi uh welcome all of you who are particularly joining from the app channel also 
very good very good yeah so uh essentially yes of course gorbodak etc all these plays are going to be coming we'll just be talking about it right we'll be discussing them in greater detail uh just in a bit let's just quickly look then at the evolution of drama you also have morality plays now what were these morality plays doing these morality plays were allegorical in nature virtue and vice were getting personified there was a personification of virtue and vice that was being done right so both your virtue and your vice they were getting personified right and one single man's salvation was actually representing how people could go towards their salvation path right so clearly when we talk about the morality plays whenever we are talking about the morality plays these are plays which are having allegorical form right these plays are having allegorical form when one play is actually representing the entire virtue right uh, and of course uh, we are having this this entire edition called the macro plays macro plays is like you know a collection that we have so when we are talking about macro where is it here yeah when we are talking about macro plays these are like you know your collection of moralities every man a dutch play is actually talk telling you how every man becomes more mature the castle of perseverance every man wisdom these are all examples of your macro plays or morality plays and dr faustus story and other stories in the elizabethan times are actually getting influenced by the morality plays okay Liji, see, majority of these performances. See, Liji has asked a very good question. That what about the performances? Religious drama was inherently performed indoors. There was a shift that comes in, like you know, after there is a sudden movement that we see. But predominantly, religious drama has always been indoors. That is actually being. That is the reason we are saying that from indoors they were moving towards outdoors, right? They were moving towards outdoors because clearly, and therefore we see a change in theme also. Why the theme is also not changing? changing is because of this very reason because if they change the theme then uh, like you know uh, then it won't it won't be suitable for being performed within the church premises we will actually continue from here don't worry about it it's just because of paucity of time uh, i'm here uh, like you know are there any doubts that you are having first of all let me ask you are there any specific doubts these are like you know simple yet important aspects uh so if there are any doubts you can let me know and like i told you in yesterday's class i got this suggestion in the comment section right in the comment section there was a suggestion that if i could tell you the page numbers also of the writers that we have done then it will be very very helpful for all of you so this is what i am basically telling you uh, you guys about it so today's class uh, if we look at it and if you are looking at the rotelle tradition which is the the i am basically having both of them but i think pages are not very different so if you have the orange colored book today's topic for discussion is page number 41 to page number to page because we've already done mallory and skelton so i'm giving you this also to literally page number 50 so from from 41 to 50 you can easily cover in this book uh, based on part 5 based on part 5 this can actually be covered so uh, basically you can cover this up this is basically from your rotelich so page number 41 to 50 can be covered Yes, Saima. There, there is, but you know, very soon uh, we will be conducting marathon sessions over the weekend. Also, hopefully, I will let you know after scheduling that. But at the moment, yes. Uh, so, if in case you are, but I will keep on posting something or the other on the Telegram channel. If there are any doubts, Swati is asking, what is liturgy? Liturgy is basically a religious gathering that you are having. It's a congregation. So, liturgy is basically the religious gathering that you have. Yes, that's right. Uh, A B Zishan, uh, this material, uh, like you know, the PDF of the class will be put on the. uh the, the pdf for the class can be accessed via the telegram channel and this book is available easily available anywhere that you go uh, you will be able to find the rotelich edition so sorry i, I hope my phone's yeah okay i keep on dropping my phone uh the rotelich edition is available in the market uh, there's a blue book also which is easily available and there's this orange edition and you can even get the ebook i think um or otherwise any book that you you're referring if you're referring to william j long i can tell you william j long speech numbers also if you're referring to edward albert also i can refer For those pages also, okay. Uh, so Edward Albert, William J. Long, Rotterdam. Um, someone had told me R. D. Trivedi. If you are referring to R. D. Trivedi also, then also I can tell you the page numbers. Uh, so yeah, I can tell you the page numbers for these books, okay. 
rotilage this is a rotilage addition this is the rotilage addition uh, we we had actually made this uh don't worry don't worry ilam uh, that there's nothing to worry about even normal pages would do this is the book this is the book that you're having i hope you're able to see this this is the rotilage edition it's called the rotilage history of literature in english all uh, right so this is the rotilage one okay so uh you can just feel feel free to let me know if there are any doubts and i will post some stuff over the weekend also it's not that you know weekend is there so we'll not meet i will try to post a video also uh, explaining one or two works which are must reads okay on that note we'll end over here yeah yeah, yeah yes hudson is also fine hudson uh, it's like it there's not a lot of detail given but hudson is also doable okay all right on that note thank you so much for joining me in enjoy your weekend make sure that you're studying really hard uh, if there are any concerns please feel free to uh, like you know if you're a youtube student put it on the comment section i will definitely see it or you can connect with us uh, via telegram also and of course on telegram i'll post some additional weekend reading material for all of you so now i will see you guys on tuesday at 7 pm right because tuesday to saturday is the week that we have for you all all right thank you so much for joining in and hope to see you very very soon uh, tuesday 7 pm any other concerns any other doubts that you're having do let me know about it okay sara the name of the telegram channel is neetra ugc net english i think yeah that is the one all right take care bye